evening programs have gathered here on the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex to compete for a national title in the 2024 UCA College Cheerleading National Championship. Welcome inside the Advent Health Arena. I'm Bill Seeley alongside Nicole LaCher. This year we're celebrating UCA's 50th anniversary. That's right. UCA is the organization that transformed cheerleading into the modern athletic activity it is today. And we're going to see a ton of athleticism today, Nicole. We're focusing this year on Division 1A. And the team that has emerged in the last few years is the University of South Florida. They are in pursuit of their fourth consecutive title. Now, they came in third in semis, but the University of South Florida has consistently made improvements and came out with a better performance in day two. Now, they will have to contend with the University of Central Florida, who placed in the top spot in the first day of competition with a deduction for your routine and the highest raw score. Now, if they can do it again in finals, they could break that streak. But you can't throw out the chance that that trophy leaves the state of Florida. University of Oklahoma, fantastic performance in semis. University of Kentucky, a lot of difficulty. They had some mistakes in semis. If they hit their routine, they have a chance as well. We have an unbelievable competition ahead for us, so let us get off the stage. And let's enjoy the show. First team now taking the floor. And Rutgers University is standing by to get things started as 10 teams have made it through to finals today. That's how they performed in the semifinal round. But now they all will start back from zero. And they'll be performing in the reverse order of their performance scores from that first round of competition. Rutgers out of New Brunswick, New Jersey. Each team's performance will be judged on their cheering section of the routine, building skills, and overall impression. Yeah, I've been really impressed with the uh, Rutgers program over the last several years. They're really starting to build a solid program. Back in finals, they missed finals last year. That can spring up a little bit of a synchronization issue. Straddle full basket tosses nice and high. Yeah, great sink. They back hand spring up to this one, one, one. They miss the one on the left. You got to get right back into it. You have very little time to really focus on any mistakes. And they do. Here, judges are looking for crowd engagement, great use of signs, palms, megaphones. How well do they get the crowd into the cheer? That's right. And as it relates to skills, the judge is looking for how well the skills are incorporated for the purpose of leading the crowd. Pretty simple. Which is what really you want, Really focused right? on you leading want, the crowd. Yeah. yeah. You want the crowd to participate, not to be a spectator in this section. <laughs> Full ups, they miss one on the left. Nice synchronization here. Pretty straightforward. Toss liberties. I love watching the pregame with these guys get ready to go down for their basket tosses. Oh! Oh, oh no! It's really critical to make sure the foundation of the pyramids, those shoulder stands, that they hit and they hit solid, it, it really does have a domino effect. And each pyramid fall is a three-point deduction, so that really does impact the score. Here they are in the opening of the routine, hand in hands at shoulder level, up to the top. It was a good start to the routine. Rutgers heads off the stage. You can see the looks on their faces. They know that was not their best performance. 
and Liberty University out of Lynchburg, Virginia, takes center stage. And here we got a step up in difficulty, the extended hand in hands, right? So the base's arms are extended, takes that difficulty level just up a notch. Liberty, 10th place last year. That can't swing full ups. They have a couple of issues here. Right back into rewinds. Still struggling with some synchronization issues. It's a young team, though. Liberty, half of their athletes out on the floor are underclassmen. Mm -hmm. Nice high double full baskets. Ball split fulls, really nicely done. Rewind up to handstand in those one one ones, and they pop up and full around. Nice job. Now, I said this about Rutgers as well, but this is another one of those programs that uh, just consistently getting better, making small incremental improvements each year. Really showing improvement year after year. Creative entry into those pyramids with their signs. Again, the focus here really on leading the crowd. So really want to make sure that the stunts aren't a distraction from that. And their crowds are getting bigger back home, too. I mean, their football program has really taken off. Full up liberties, a little shaky in the middle. Great save. <laughs> Back tuck up to A-frames. They miss the thighs right there, but they get her up on there. Ooh. Tell you, you know, Liberty. Good save. Yeah, great save. I, they consistently hit their routine, but they had, you know, they were just a little short of nailing things. Beautiful extension here on the basket tosses. Ball split falls really well done. Liberty heads off the floor, hey, Gordon, but Dodge. plenty of activity ahead in the practice gym where Ole Miss get loose and LSU with their final practice under new head coach, Matty Parton. Don't go away. This is my favorite thing ever, and this is the last time I get to do it. So if you and I am, I do not want to be out here with any other team in the country. I love you guys. I'm so proud of you. What a great moment and such a demonstration of leadership backstage. Yeah, Zach played a big role in keeping the team together as they were between coaches uh, this year. That's that, that kind of leadership helped set the foundation for Matty Parton to take over. And they start with the cheer, which is something we've seen from teams in years past. And so much of the cheer is based on presence, right? Leading the crowd, how they're engaging with the people in the crowd. And really, before they get into Good start to the music section of the routine so far. Back handspring up to the top. A little bit of a synchronization issue here on those hand and hands on the left. But a lot of difficulty. Beautiful straddle, fulls. 
Yeah, and there's just a different level of execution here from the first two teams that we saw. That's right. And you see, when she came up to that pyramid, she checked to her right to make sure that the other stunts were up in the air, had a smile right there to see that they indeed were. You're right, Phil. Really a different team from an execution perspective than we've seen in years past. Oh, a little touchdown on the tumbling pass in the front, though. Double up to finish things off. A little messy, but really difficult. Well done. At a Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That was LSU. Here's another look at one of their pyramid sequences, a laid out rewind to A-frame. You can tell this team is really focused on execution, hitting each skill with precision. And then a strong finish, this double up in the middle. They really make it happen. Big improvement from semis to finals. LSU heads off the floor as Ole Miss takes the floor. Also returning to finals after missing last year's final round. Strong start with some standing foals in the front. Extended hand and hands that are solid. High to high full around. Oh, oh, and a great save. She just comes down a little bit early. She goes right into the full twisting layout. It's like, no problem. I got this. Double full basket tosses. A little bit of a form issue on the left. Wow. Spin up to those one, one, ones. Nice job. Man, great opening. One little bobble, but man. Really good difficulty opening. Difficulty in that opening. Okay, now here's where they need to refocus on the crowd. Oh. Ole Miss is coached by Skylar Casey. And it looks like there's been, been some aggressive megaphone work with this megaphone right here. <laughs> Pull up stretches unassisted here too. That also increased the level of difficulty. Just one base. Creative pyramid sequence here up into Swedish Falls. Beautiful X out basket in the middle. And a full twisting rewind up to the top. Struggling a bit, but stay up in the air. Hotty toddy in the house. A highlight here, ripple cartwheel ups to the top. Excellent form. Ole Miss, happy with that performance. I think they improved on their semifinals as well. But no one has won more titles than the University of Kentucky. But the last was in 2019. And Taylor Quinn spoke with Cat senior Fernando Beltran after the semifinals yesterday. Last year wasn't exactly the finish you wanted, placing second. How did that propel you into this year? Honestly, it can just convinced us that, you know, we need to put in more work, that we need to go into every single practice willing to do whatever coach says, whether it's doing 10 full outs every day, 15 full outs. It, it doesn't matter. We we just decided, hey, we're going to go in there. We're going to put in the work and we're not going to say no. We're not going to complain and we're just going to close our mouths and do our stuff. The semifinal performance, there's still room for improvement. What were your coaches telling you? you no, know, there's always room for improvement, you know, whether it's a semifinals or finals. 
um, today is just the, it's the little things, you know, the timing wasn't perfect. Uh, of course, we had a mistake, but that's not something that we, we can go back and just redo. But we're going to go and try to fix it, just fit, uh, work out the little kinks, figure out what happened, watch that video, try to prevent it as much as possible and just do our normal job. You know, we've done that a million times and we can do it one more time. One of the iconic programs in college cheerleading out of Lexington, Kentucky. And wow, they always come with a difficulty. They open with double ups. Certainly a step up from what we've seen in the past. Yeah, standing fulls. They always will try to max out the difficulty. But this year, they have taken a more conservative approach to really make sure they perform a solid routine. They had a little bit of a issue there on the left. But so far, a strong start. I tell you, looking at all of the SEC teams, there's just a level of confidence when they're out there on the floor. And I think part of that is constantly being in front of massive crowds. Wow. And those full twisting rewinds to one one ones, we've never seen that perform before here at the championship. And they nailed it. It's been four years since the University of Kentucky has won a title. Last time was 2019. Kentucky is coached by Ryan O'Connor. Such an incredible tradition here at Kentucky. 24 titles, like you said, Bill. It's really a tradition of excellence and just dedication to this craft. Wow. Extending hand in hands, they slip front to their feet. It's a blind landing, makes it a lot harder. Yeah, a little trouble there on the right side of the mat. Pull up stretches, and there's nine of them. So it's not just the difficulty that we're seeing here. It's how many skills they have up in the air and how many of them are unassisted. Wow. Beautiful. The height on those double full baskets, the highest we've seen so far. University of Kentucky always has just such a dynamic, fast moving, great transition routine. They just haven't been able to put it all together out here on the final floor. But a great performance today from the Solid University ending. of Kentucky. In these opening double ups, they have to spin so much faster to make two full rotations. That's difficulty we just don't see on other teams. And these beautiful double full basket tosses, you have to get them so high to really complete the entire skill, and they're just gorgeous. Another day at the office for the University of Kentucky <laughs> and returning to finals, the oh, University of Cincinnati, Taylor Quinn, caught up with them in the practice gym a few minutes ago. The Bearcats are back in finals. Eric, you were just saying it's been four years. What's different about this team? I think we have a lot of returning people that have been on mat and have also felt the same, like not making it to finals. And I think uh, we put together a routine that we're very confident in. We've hit it in practice um, multiple times and we're just ready to perform it. We're excited and it's been a lot of fun. So I think that's the most important part is we have fun doing it. And that's the key here is putting together a routine that you can hit. What are we going to see today? Oh, uh, you're going to see, actually, I mean, the hard part was yesterday. The hard part's getting the finals, you know. Uh, trust yourself. Trust the people that you're with. Uh, you know, we're family. We love each other. And, you know, go and do it for one another. That's what I would say to them. Bearcats just missed finals in 22. They finished 12th in semis that year. Top finish for them, fifth place. They did it in 2017 and 2003. And you can already see the focus on more lower level skills to really make sure they're hitting the stunt. So they perform them really well. Toss stretches, front hand spring outs, hand in hands at shoulders, focusing on execution. So important to put your team in the best position to win. 
so many times coaches will come out and they challenge and push their team for difficulty and they don't take into account the nerves of coming out during finals. You want to make sure that this is something they can hit 10 out of 10 times. So when they come out on the floor, there's just this level of confidence that you see, which really translates on the score sheet. Round off rewinds to one, one, ones. And oh, they missed that one in the middle. Now the critical thing is to get right back into it. They've got to prepare. And it looks like when that pyramid came down the middle, they didn't get the sign up for the cheer, which is a real problem with their cheer score. Of the 30 points that are dedicated to the cheer, five are very specific to the use of signs, palms, and megaphones. So that really does impact their performance. Leadership is such an important part of cheerleading. You look at what these young people do during the year. I mean, this is their time to shine, but most of the time they're at the Saturday football games, they're leading right. pep rallies, so busy on campus, such great ambassadors for their schools. A solid full up libs, unassisted. Nice. Backhands bring up to one, one, one. And a full up to top it all off. Good routine. Here's a look at the backhand spring. They go straight up to shoulder straddle on that middle layer and then full up another top girl to the top of that pyramid. The Bearcats from the University of Cincinnati. I love it. Taking another look at that routine. Guess I don't need to tell you who is next on the floor with more on their story. Here's Taylor. The University of Alabama has some strong pyramid sections this year. Jay, talk to me about how you guys put those together and what we're going to see today. Okay, uh, the pyramids is pretty crazy. We've been working since June, July, working on pyramids. It's been really trying to elevate the game of cheerleading, and that's always the goal with Alabama, just trying to raise the standard. And of course, the Alabama football team, you guys are there on the sidelines every weekend. You're traveling with them postseason year after year, and you continue to do, still do so well here at the cheerleading national championship. Why is that? I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, it's just a mindset. We make sure that we're all mentally trained, mentally focused, making sure we're physically focused. Our trainers take really good care of us and just really good uh, to be able to be at the University of Alabama with that. Yeah, the mental training and toughness that you develop within the, just this two minute and 30 second routine is really something you'll take with you for the rest of your life. Another one of those great SEC programs that really knows how to work a crowd. Yep, and they start with their cheer as well. They're relaxed, they're focused on the crowd. It's very, it comes very natural to these guys. Their spirit coordinator is Jennifer Thrasher, coached by Krista Grizzle Sanford. And based on what we saw in semifinals, this is a team to watch. Extended hand in hands, front to feet, a completely blind landing, they nail it. A little bit of an issue there on the right, but they recover. But an extremely difficult sequence. Like Kentucky, South Florida, and I'm sure Central Florida, you're gonna see them max out 
the score sheet with difficulty. Wow. Full up stretches, nine of them, unassisted, really showcasing the depth of skill on this team. Beautiful bird front right there in the middle. Probably one of the busiest teams in college cheerleading. Team made their playoffs. That's right. And wow, Arabian 111s. Those are the pyramid skills I think he was talking about. 84 different games they've attended this year. And then wow. they get ready for this. Talk about a lesson in time management. Yeah, and goes back to that point about mental toughness and focus and discipline. Nice strong ending. And that is how you roll Tide. <laughs> Again, you can just see the precision of this team from their partner stunts to their pyramids. A very strong finish. Yeah, roll tide, roll. Great performance by the University of Alabama. South Florida will be taking the floor next as three-time defending champions. They're going to have to improve on their semifinal performance if they're going to get their fourth. This looks like the most difficult routine you've ever put on the floor. How do you continue to get better year after year? Our coaching staff, they truly are so incredible. They push us like no other. They are so tough on us, but they love us unconditionally. And they we train so hard and we have so much grit throughout this whole season since I've been here. We've just been training, been training to be better than the days we have been each day. And it's fantastic. Skill wise and routine wise, what's different this year? Um, this year we have um, much more difficult skills, I feel like, in my opinion. Uh, we have front one and a halves, and our, we have a little bit more tumbling, as you guys can see, and it's just a lot higher paced. <laughs> I know you guys aren't satisfied with the semifinals performance. What are you focusing on going into finals? Just being better than that routine we put out there. It wasn't what we had uh, hoped for, but we can't wait to see what the final holds. And if we get the opportunity to keep going, we're just going to put our best foot forward from here on out. And Bill, in the last few years, we've talked about the parity in this division. We've really, we've already seen some fantastic routines. We have three more left. I tell you, South Florida is one of those teams. She talked about her coach, Ronnie Patrick. It's one of those teams where he puts the team in a great place to win a title. They consistently nail their routines year after year. It's really what's gotten them the three titles. They wait for other people to make mistakes and they come out with a lot of difficulty, but not too much. That's right, they've really focused on consistency. They shocked the cheerleading world when they won their first national championship back in 21. Surprised everyone again, winning back to back. And last year they said, we're here for good. And again, they have the skills to be one of the very best. Full twisting wow. lines to A-frame. Just fantastic. Yeah, I've been making the comments about the SEC and just how confident they look out there and leading the crowd. This is one of those teams, not massive crowds in their football games, but man, what great confidence, great leadership skills. No. But they're out there leading the crowd they've got. And a real veteran program this year. They only have two freshmen out on the floor. 
Rewind up to immediate stretches makes it more difficult to immediately pull the stretch. And they miss one on the left, which is going to hurt their overall score. Nice. Beautiful straddle full baskets. Double up in the middle. And a nice ending. From Tampa, Florida, the University of South Florida. And this is the hardest entry into an extended hand in hand we've seen so far. Diamidov, and they front flip to their feet. A completely blind landing makes it extremely difficult. A double up, up to A frame in the middle. A real solid ending there. Yeah, still think of. The Bulls have. It's about us. We have a lot of things happening outside of here but like when we focus on ourselves like that is the big picture of this and this is like our missing piece is like if we can only focus on ourselves and what we're doing our job um that's that's going to make us get it through this whole routine with the way that we want to execute it you're sitting in second going into finals what does this team have to do to take home the title today um put out good Charlotte, and that's like our number one goal is to do us put out our best it doesn't matter what what everybody else is putting out there. It's like, what matters what Oklahoma puts out there on the mat? What's the best Oklahoma cheerleading that we can put out there? Those are wise words. And what we've been talking about throughout the show, being your best, your most difficult, so you can put yourself in a position to be successful. And really focusing on what you can control and leaving behind what you can't, right? So focusing on being your very best, like you said, Bill. Ooh, a little bit of an issue right there in the middle. Keep it up in the air. Backhand spring full ups. I tell you, this program has come such a long way. Bill O'Neill's a spirit coordinator. Miranda Noel Hubbard is the head coach and her husband, Keegan Hubbard, is the assistant there. They've done an incredible job. They really have. Good opening. You need to put that on your calendar. It is so much fun to see how they bring the team out and the way the audience just reacts. Love the use of signs here. Great big signs to really focus the crowd on yelling with them. Boomer Sooner. Cartwheel ups. Nice job. We're certainly not seeing the difficulty that we've seen with some of the other teams, but they're really focused on execution, which is always a good strategy. Full twisting rewind up to the top. Great save. Boomer Sooners. Here's a look at one of the pyramids in the routine. Top girl's got a lot of confidence. She pulls up into a shoulder straddle. Really creative transitions throughout. Sooners head off, and one team remains, the home team from UCF. First coming out of semis, they're going to have to repeat that performance if they want to get a title today. We just heard the coaches from UCF saying, you guys are peaking at the right time. Maddie, how are you doing it? I think the preparation leading up to this moment, believing in our teammates, trusting each other on the mat, knowing that if we have a perfect warm up, we can go out there and we can do what we know how to do. Going into finals, first place out of the semifinals, of course, it's a clean slate today. 
What's it like being the last team to go? I think that we are very calm, collected today. We're not focused on how other people are doing. We're really just focused on ourselves. Um, we were in first place yesterday, but that doesn't matter today. Today's a brand new day, and we're confident going into the finals today. There seems to be a real confidence in her voice, and like there's, she's not worrying about anything that's out there which is old school UCF. They've had some problems over the last several years in putting it all together on this final day. Let's see how they do here. Yeah, always a team with so much talent though, so much potential. Part of their motivation is the memory of one of their former teammates they lost, Nick Thomas. Extended hand in hands. Flawless. Full ups and full around. Nice. Nine of them. And so solid. Yeah, you don't even see the base's feet move. That's exactly what you want to see. Beautiful high double full baskets. Ball wow. Ball fulls, just gorgeous. Wow. That is so difficult. They start back handspring and then they flip front to feet. Another blind landing. And they look so relaxed. They make this look really easy and it's definitely not. That's the key. They're confident. They've done it every single time for the last 10, 15, you name it. And they come out here on finals and they just exude that confidence. And you can see it in how they're leading the crowd right now. Yeah, and this is such a fantastic cheer. So many signs. The arrows really indicate who they want to yell what. And it just is such a crowd favorite. Great energy. And one of the great coaches in college cheerleading, Linda Gooch. Linda has built this program from the ground up. One of the greatest of all time, for sure. <laughs> Beautiful bird front basket toss in the back. Rewind up to 1-1-1. One, one, one. They just have a few more skills left. And they have done it. They have nailed that routine and they are already really happy about it. Here's another look. Just look at how solid these skills are. They've got nine up in the air, the face's feet barely moving. Full twisting rewind. Just they know that they've nailed it at that point. Well, that's how you do it. And that wraps up the competition. The results are in the judges hands. We'll see them when we get back. Official team communication app of Varsity Spirit by Gatorade. Gatorade is helping millions play. Join us and fuel tomorrow. And by Herc Jones, strengthening communities by celebrating student accomplishments. As UCF gets a chance to review their performance, we'd like to congratulate some of the other champions here this weekend. Here is the University of West Georgia. Coached by Nicole Nichols. This team is always a favorite and performed exceptionally here at the championship. They are the 2024 Division I champions, beating out Moorhead State University with one of the most difficult routines of the championship. Congratulations to the Wolves of West Georgia. And in our small co-ed Division IA, it was the University of Memphis Tigers taking home the crown. Memphis put together solid performance, great pyramid transitions. Small co-ed is five males or less out on the floor. And the Tigers take home. Hankins 
This team has been a perennial powerhouse at the championship, and this is their third title in the Open Coed Division. And as a two-year college, a lot of these young athletes will go on to compete on some of the teams we've seen in the Division 1A category. Congratulations and give it up for your Open Coed National Champion from Ellsville, Mississippi. Give it up for Jones College. Nicole, incredible competition tonight. We're down to our top four teams. All four of these teams are pedigree champion programs. That's right. Four great traditions, great programs for great performances here tonight. All four teams have at least three national championships to their credit. We'll start out in fourth place in the nation, the University of South Florida. In third place, the University of Kentucky. One of these two will be getting their fourth national championship. Second place in the nation, the University of Alabama. And the trophy is staying in Florida with the University of Central Florida. UCF scores more than a point higher than their semifinal score, while Alabama jumps from fourth to second place, only a half a point behind the Knights. Here's Taylor with our new national champions. The last time UCF won a national championship, Maddie, you were a senior in high school. You've been waiting four years for this moment. How does reality compare? <laughs> this is an unreal feeling. We've had the most kind of dysfunctional year, but it all makes sense now when we come out on top. <laughs> this team has all been all about peaking at the right time. We saw it in warmups. We saw it in semifinals. What was the secret? Just staying calm, collected, doing what we know how to do. Yep. And what does this fourth title mean to UCF? I say we did it for Nick. <laughs> Congratulations, UCF national champions. UCF with their first title since 2020. Nicole, your thoughts? What we saw here today was a combination of trust, composure, dedication, resilience, focus, and discipline. And UCF brought all of those to life with their routine here today. For Taylor Quinn, Nicole Lachere, and the rest of our crew, I'm Bill Seeley saying 